Ahoy! Every time our server receives a collect and exchange type of event, I'm faced with countless questions about which place is the best to farm those items. So I've decided to make a general video about some of the most popular dungeons worth farming for event items. The thing is, the list of dungeons always changes depending on the particular event that's going on, so you'll have to check your publisher's website for that but there's a pretty good chance you will find some of those dungeons in this video. So during these events the good thing is, every single monster in any dungeon has the exact same chance to drop one of those items. So the goal is to kill as many of them as possible in as little time as possible. Therefore you can choose to run dungeons that have tons of monsters in them doing full runs, or dungeons that have places with quick respawn times for staying at one spot. Each has its own advantages and I will let you figure out which you prefer. I'm only here to show you the best places and it's up to you to choose which suits your interest the best. And of course there are Eternal Chaos Arena and Glacius Inferno which fit into both of these categories but they are rarely included in events so this video won't cover them. Just remember that they exist, I'm sure you already know how to do those anyway, just go in and kill everything you see. So let's start with the full runs. Remember I said killing many enemies in small amounts of time is the goal? Well, why not do some easy dungeons that almost anyone can finish? Doesn't really matter if the loot otherwise is too low for you as long as you get event items. Volcanic Citadel is not a bad choice as it's pretty easy to finish and it's got tons of monsters spawning. However, there's a pretty long waiting time for spawns and you have to run around a lot as well, so it gets boring really fast. Something that's not much harder is Tower of the Dead B2F. I've included that in almost every video about event item farming and so it made it to this one as well. A while ago most of the waiting times were removed so now you can smoothly run this dungeon without waiting for spawns. Also make sure you click every object that you can see because disturbing them summons even more minions to deal with. And that means more loot. Holy Windmill, commonly known as the Wing Dungeon, also has plenty of monsters in it but it's limited to 3 runs a day and once again you have to spend the majority of your time waiting for spawns. But still if you're leveling your wings, why not do it? It's worth farming even without events so the rest is just gravy. Steamer Crazy and Catacomb Frost DX dungeons are swarming with enemies too and are pretty fast to finish. Of course the loot is nothing extraordinary, but if you're doing hard difficulty and you're in Europe or the US, you get free entries in your mailbox for up to 3 runs a day. Otherwise I believe the entries are too expensive to be worth investing into many of them, but it's up to you. Forbidden Island and the Awakened version are both packed with a bunch of enemies, so they aren't bad options either to farm during these events. And if you're feeling like spending some extra time inside, the spot with those tribal guys before defeating the infamous boss at the top of the stairs provides you with some fast respawning targets. You just have to run back and forth a bit. Now something that's considerably harder is Acheron Arena or Acheron, I don't know how to pronounce that. Pretty sure the people who translated this to English never read it out loud anyway. But that's irrelevant, the point is, it's a dungeon that's commonly farmed for normal damage up rune and although the entry is quite expensive, during these collect and exchange events the hordes of enemies usually reward you with a few items to make up for that. These were the ones that are most popular for farming, but of course there could be many others that could prove good enough in certain situations. Now let's move on to the other category which involves entering a dungeon and then staying inside for a long time, possibly without even finishing it. I'd like to begin with Devil's Tower because this one can be run with the intention of finishing the run too and you'll still kill plenty of enemies. The first two rooms are chock full of hell spawns that are just waiting to get rid of their loot in your favor. If you're in need of XP, you have one more reason to run this dungeon because at this moment it's probably got the highest XP gain in the whole game. But anyway, staying at one spot, once you reach the third room and defeat the first two forms of the boss in there, you will see that the whole room is being set on fire. These fires can be extinguished for a short time, but they are very persistent and just won't go out until the boss is banished. So you can stay here for like 10 minutes in each run fighting them. Of course Devil's Tower is limited to 2 runs a day, so this isn't a very reliable farming place. 
Speaking of fires, in Illusion Castle Radiant Hall, if you clear the dungeon until this boss, you can have it spawn a nearly unlimited amount of fire traps. Burn, burn everything! That's indeed pretty much what happens if you leave it to do its job for two hours. And you can do whatever else you want during that time, as long as your computer keeps running. But don't blame me if the electricity bill is higher than your profit after that. Also, make sure you don't accidentally kill the boss before getting rid of the fires or they all disappear. A different and a bit more exciting and effective method would be to kill the fire boss and go on all the way until the lightning one. This one spawns lightning traps at the same frequency, but while it's doing that you can go back to the library and farm there actively. Respawn times in the library are quite long, but it's better than nothing. And when you get bored of that, or the time is running out, you can kill off the lightnings and then finish the dungeon. Another considerably more effective and slightly less time consuming method is to enter any chaos arena. Destroy the gate and then wait for the waves to appear. Of course you can kill them off as they appear, or if you're strong enough, just do it all at once at the end. The boss spawns at around 11.40 plus the time you took to kill the gate first, so for example if you kill it within 10 seconds it's going to be at 11.30. Careful not to open the chest though, doing so makes every monster inside vanish instantly along with all the possible loot from them. By the way, the higher the grade of the chaos arena the more enemies spawn. And now for the paradise of macro users, Forgotten Temple B2F. If you aren't familiar with this method, then you might think this dungeon isn't cut out for farming events, but let me prove you wrong there. All you have to do is get to the first boss. She's the one you may be annoyed by when she goes invincible, but in this case, this is exactly what you want to happen. When that shield appears around her, she's invincible as long as the red ant is alive. So all you have to do is get the red ant to a safe distance, then master up your area of effect skills and turn auto attack on in the options and bring a few thousand mana potions with you, because mana steel won't work if your main target is invulnerable. You can have the game running in the background and just check back from time to time to take the loot, or you can have your mouse work for you if you feel like cheating. And one more dungeon that's kind of a hybrid and yields good results, whether you finish the whole thing or just focus on the event items at one spot. Altar of Sienna B2F. You know that area with the two columns where you have to collect all those quest items and they never drop enough on the first try so you have to wait 30 seconds? Well, you can keep doing that indefinitely. And if you click a column to spawn the mutants, then click it again before they appear and you can trick the game into spawning two waves. I'm pretty sure this feature is not intended though, so if you keep doing that and get banned for abusing bugs, I will definitely deny that you heard it from me. Anyway, if you keep going on in the same dungeon, you will eventually reach this room. After getting rid of those mutated birds, click this something on the wall. That starts a rapidly respawning monster wave that's a lot more effective than farming at the columns. However, this only lasts 10 minutes or so, but still it's pretty awesome. Now you may be wondering why I didn't mention Ruina Station. The buffalo spot before the last room is quite a decent place for farming. However, in Europe we haven't had Ruina Station on the list of dungeons for similar events for the last few years. But you should know this is also a valid spot if you get an event with this dungeon's monsters dropping items. And there's one more spot with rapidly respawning monsters in the dungeon Illusion Castle Apocrypha at the second boss. If the boss is alive, they respawn almost immediately, but only about 8 or 10 times or so. But personally, I don't know if this is a bug for Europe only, I haven't found any event item dropped by those enemies. They seem to ignore events like this, even though the dungeon is on the list. Still worth giving it a try at the beginning of each event to see if they do. So I believe you should now be familiar with the most popular event item farming spots. If you have any favorite dungeons for this that I did not mention in the video, let me and your fellow viewers know about it in the comments. Ahoy!